So my name is Radzi. I'm one of the presenters. I work for the BBC. And so I wanted to come and tell you a little bit about myself and how I got to work on TV. Because the reason I'm speaking to you is I genuinely think that if you really put your mind to it, then why can't you be somebody that works in this building or works in TV or works in radio or works on YouTube? So where I'm from in Wolverhampton, I don't know anyone that's on TV except Liam Payne from One Direction. He was the year above my sister in school. But apart from that, no one from Wolverhampton you ever see about or hear about. And so I thought, because I came from, so my parents split up when I was about 10 years old, so I came from a broken home, I was the poorest in my entire school. I used to think, I'm not gonna achieve anything I set my, set my eyes on, because I think, why would I get it? Because life had told me that life's gonna be okay, but it's not gonna be very special. It took me six years of a journey to get my opportunity in TV. I went to, a th I went to university. I then decided I wanted to do skeleton bobsleigh because I wanted to make the Winter Olympics in 2014. Who saw the Winter Olympics in 2014? Well, if you did, I wasn't there because I failed. <laughs> so I went for another journey. I tried to chase another unicorn, which was presenting. I would turn up to things and say, do you have a presenter? And I would try and do that for free. Meanwhile, I was working in a leisure center to pay for the bills. And so I was doing that and it took me three years. And eventually, while I was doing an internship at CBBC, as somebody came in and said, we're looking for somebody with an extreme sports background to try out for a new show called Wild. Fortunately, I got that and it changed my life. 10 weeks of live TV. And after that, I got offered Blue Peter. And after that, because of everything that I'd learned about the journey, about you've got to try, you've got to try your best, you've got to keep going, you've got to, be, you've got to persevere, you've got to send emails, you've got to meet people, you've got all these things, that's what's got me to where I am today. And every day, I try to think, how can I be better than yesterday? Now, Dude with the throwing microphone, you look like somebody who's got questions for me. Do you have any questions you'd like to ask? I'll happily keep talking for half an hour. Um, so I have two questions. Hit me, dude. Um, how would you end up being a reporter and what was your favourite moment on Blue Peter? Okay, favourite moment on Blue Peter is I got to skydive with the RAF Falcons. I did it on my, I solo skydived, which means I'm the one jumping out of a plane. And when you're under the canopy, just you, it is majestic. It is beautiful. You're not thinking about anything at all. You're just thinking, you're experiencing this sensory privilege. It's unbelievable. How, was it, how did I become a reporter? So I became a reporter. So first was on Blue Peter as a present, well, show called Wild, then Blue Peter, after many, many, many jobs that I did for free. Off the back of doing a number of things, I, some of my jobs have required me to perhaps talk about things that are a bit more serious. So I went things on question time, and I'm into politics and stuff like that. So there was this new show that Angelina Jolie was gonna be exec producing, the boss off basically, and she said she wanted to make a news show for the age that her children are at. And so when I found out about that, I thought, oh, that's something I'm really passionate about. And so I actually, the truth be told, I feel like a bit of a responsibility that why don't we try and make the news a little bit more engaging for young people. And so I said, I wanted to be a part of that. And so I did a thing called a screen test, where you go into a studio and they test you and they see how it goes. And if you're the right fit, and perhaps if you've got the right tone, 101 different things, then they said, we'd like to have you involved. And that's how I got January. involved. And that was in October and the first show came out in January. Do we have any more questions, by the way? Because often what happens is... By the way, dude, how long did it take to grow your hair? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't really get it quite anyway, but maybe occasionally it gets a bit trimmed, but not it doesn't really get cut that often. Do we like Carl's hair? Yeah. Let's give yeah. Carl's hair a round of applause. Yeah. Yes, Carl. Good catch. Um, is there anything you regret about like, your journey so far? That is a, that is a brilliant question. So, twofold to that answer. One, I've made lots of mistakes. Are they regrets? They're regrets that I wouldn't repeat them, but I, on I only knew they were mistakes once I'd made them, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So, when I was trying to get into TV, I used to write really long emails to people, really long, explaining who I was and all the rest of it. And it wasn't until a friend of mine, who's actually in his 70s, so he's a bit of a mentor to me, said to me, a lot of people 
when it comes to emails, they ask for things. So he said, instead, ask to give. So instead, I'll say, I've got an idea that I'd love to share with you. Would it be possible to share that idea? So now, the same thing will happen. I'll hopefully meet up with that person, but I'm trying to offer something. So looking back, I'd have never done that. Number two, if I were to be your age now and I was gonna try and get into broadcasting, my big thing would be, no longer do qualifications really matter in the same way as when I was your age. I think now, you have to be able to show knowledge. We, all of you guys here, you are all unique. No one has lived your life exactly the same way you have. Even if you have brothers or sisters, half sisters, whatever it might be, they have not lived exactly the same life as you. Therefore, you are unique. Therefore, you'll have unique interests. And even if you don't have unique interests because you think, I like football just like everyone else, what is it about football that you love? And perhaps, you can show a passion, whether it's you start to write a blog about a particular thing. So let's take if it's Arsenal, I love Thierry Henry. Perhaps I write a blog every week on the best goals Thierry Henry has ever scored. So I'll then get known as the guy who writes the Arsenal blog. And that then might lead on to other things. But it's about showing passion or showing qualification without necessarily having it, but by proving it with a passion that you have. How was your first experience in uh, front of the camera? Because you said like you work for the TV. So. The very first thing I did that was properly in front of a camera was at the Olympics in 2012. And I loved it. It was incredible. So when I was um, at the XL Arena, I'd be speaking to the crowd, and then it was also recorded for the cameras, and it would then go to the Olympic Village. Now, I was so nervous because I wanted it to go well and I wanted it to be good. It was a mixture of pure fear, pure adrenaline, but the conclusion was I absolutely love it. Occasionally when you get to do things in life and you think this is incredible, even though you're scared, even though you don't know how you're gonna do, when you get to the other side, that was just confirmation that this is for me. And it was the first time in my life that I thought I found something that I really want to do. Not like my friends, a lot of them had done jobs because they felt like they should do them or because family had kind of said, why don't you do this or why don't you do that? It was something that I really wanted to do. Um, you've obviously been on different shows. Um, how has it shaped you to who you are now? The things I've learned, I've gotten to meet the most wonderful people. I'm not bothered how many Instagram followers you have. I'm not bothered how famous you are, how rich you are. I am bothered about your story. And I've gotten to meet people who aren't famous. In fact, one man uh, walked with Martin Luther King from Selma in America to Montgomery. And in so doing, they helped change the lives of African Americans in America in the civil rights movement. Now, when you look into his eyes, he's a reverend, looking into his eyes, knowing that his eyes have directly witnessed history, that is what I've taken from TV. That's what I've taken from reporting. That's what I've taken from broadcasting. So those are the kinds of stories that I really take with me. And that's what really resonates in my heart. So I could tell you about famous people I've met. I could tell you about rich people I've met. But for me, it's actually about not what you are, but who you are. Thank you very much, guys. And I look forward to in the future. So if we're 11, 12, 13 now, roll on 10 years, we're going to have one of you sat next to me and we're going to talk stories about what you've done to get where you are then, which will be now in the future, a little bit meta, because I think one of you guys, there's no reason why you can't do what I do, because when I was sat where you were, there was nothing special about me. So if I can do anything on TV, so can you guys. And even if you don't want to do it in TV, whether you want to be an astronaut, whether you want to be a truck driver, whatever it is you want to do, it's not going to be easy. It's, not, it's certainly not guaranteed but why not you? Because it can be you. Find your voice with a BBC Our Reporter.